This is the last time that the British fight as the key players in a turning point battle in world history, up until at least the present day. Uh, the British turn a World War II battle into a World War I style battlefield. You saw the artillery, you saw the sappers going forward with the tape and the metal detectors. You saw people getting shot, and uh, you saw the infantry advancing along the lines uh, laid out by the sappers, of course, with bagpipes, because British. The British, in a, about a week, just under a week, grind Rommel's forces to the point where they have to begin a long retreat. The British pursue, and unlike the last few times, the British pursue beyond Skyronesia, beyond Benghazi, all the way to Tunisia in North Africa. Now, in November of 1942, the first U.S. advance in Europe takes place. In November of 42, Operation Torch is a series of Anglo-American landings along the west coast uh, of French Africa, including some towns inside the Mediterranean. So the British and the American fleets and armies uh, sneak up to the shore and then land. The big question is, what will the Vichy French do? Remember, the French government is a puppet of Hitler in South France. Will the forces that are in North Africa, loyal to Vichy, shoot at British and American soldiers who are trying to fight Hitler? and free France. Well, the calculation is that since the British had to sink the French fleet uh, in order to prevent it from falling into German hands, there are a lot of Vichy Frenchmen who are perfectly willing to shoot at the British. But the Americans are a different story. See, France and the United States up through World War II had a very special relationship. Remember, France makes possible the American Revolution's success. The French appreciate America's freshness and republic. Uh, Americans appreciate French sophistication and joie de vivre. And France did come to the aid, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, the United States did come to the aid of France in World War I. One, uh, Pershing comes and says, Lafayette, we are here. The thought of Frenchmen shooting at Americans who are coming to free France from the Nazis, that's a much harder pill. So when the forces land, there is sporadic resistance by Vichy French forces, including the battleship Jean Bar in Casablanca Harbor, which ends up in a long-range gunnery duel with the USS Massachusetts. The Jean Bar is at dock, which gives the Massachusetts an edge, but still you have a battleship and major forces around Casablanca who are French fighting the Americans and fighting the British. However, fairly quickly, the French stop, either because the really hardcore Vichy officers are shot by their own men, which happens, or because the British and the Americans seize the ground and the Vichy French surrender, or there is no fighting because the Vichy French are led by officers or at least staffed by men who really understand that it is Germany, not Britain, that's the enemy, not, not America. So in some cases, the forces come ashore in uh, relatively peaceful order. What this is going to set the stage for during the later part of the war is for Anglo-American forces in northwest Africa and British forces in uh, northeast Africa to head towards Tunisia, which is the heart of Italian and German power in North Africa. So that stage is set. Now we shift to Russia. Remember, the Germans failed to capture Moscow for a variety of reasons that we talked about. Moscow's up here. In 1942, everyone expects Hitler to go for Moscow. But Hitler's an artist. And Hitler decides that Moscow's irrelevant. He plays a Fox's version of Sour Grapes, uh, like from Aesop's Fables. Ah, uh, Moscow. Who, who wants Moscow anyway? So... Um, <coughs> instead of going for Moscow, Hitler puts his major forces in the south of Russia, and his goals are to take the Ukraine, 
the Crimea, the Kuban, the Caucasus, and the oil fields at Baku on the Caspian Sea. Hitler wants these economic goals because the grain of the Ukraine can feed Germany and the oil of the Caucasus and Transcaucasus in Baku can give Germany its only reliable supply of oil. Now, people point out this is going to leave a hugely exposed long frontier between German and Russian forces. Hitler believes that in the end, if he captures Baku, the next year he'll be able to attack up into Russia. Hitler is not taking into account the size of Russia, nor the population difference. Hitler assumes that he can fold Europe's people, Europe's manpower, into the German army, and that they'll fight as well as Germans. So the attack in 42 begins. Instead of conquering Leningrad in the north, what we call St. Petersburg, the Germans lay siege to it, and the Finns lay siege to it too. The Finns come back uh, and hold the northern edges around uh, the Karelian Isthmus between Lake Ladoga and the Gulf of Finland. They take the territory they lost, uh, but they don't go further into Russia. The Finns do not attack deep into Russia. The Germans are holding off. Leningrad, what we call St. Petersburg, is a major Russian city. It's the second most important, most populous Russian city. For 900 days, that city is under siege. That's almost three years. For 900 days, the only food that gets into Leningrad is over frozen Lake Ladoga during the winter months. And it's not much. Leningraders resort to cannibalism on a scale never seen in modern times to survive. It is a horror show of horror shows. This was alluded to in the movie about uh, Dmitry Shostakovich, Testimony, which I, which I showed you part of. There were other parts where he talked about, first we ate the Jews, and then we found others. It unimaginable that you have a major modern city whose only food supplier are its people. But the Germans decide that that's what they're going to do because it seems crueler and less costly than actually taking the city. Again, Hitler leaves Moscow alone. He just holds the front line and attacks in the south. Now, throughout the summer of 42, Hitler takes the Ukraine. He takes Crimea. Uh, he goes deep into the Kuban, which is the area north of the Caucasus Mountains. However, to anchor his front... Here is the city of what used to be called Tsaritsyn, city of the Tsar. It's today called Volgograd, city on the Volga, but in those days was called Stalingrad. Now, by no means is it the only city named after Joe Stalin. There's Stalino, uh, there, there are a bunch of Stalin cities. But this Stalingrad is where Stalin himself took part in the Russian Civil War. Stalin actually took part in some battles here. So he has a uh, attachment to this particular city of Stalin, Stalingrad, on the Volga River. The Germans need to hold, take and hold Stalingrad to anchor their entire front so that they can put their attack forces into the drive on Baku. In August of 1942, an entire German field army under General von Paulus, the 6th Army, drives towards Stalingrad, but Hitler and his generals decide they need more tanks in the south. So just as von Paulus is approaching Stalingrad, most, not all, of their tanks are diverted away from Stalingrad to the attacks down here. What this is going to mean is that von Paulus' army, as it approaches Stalingrad, is significantly weaker than it should be. In hopes of easing their conquest of Stalingrad, German aircraft flatten the city, which has a major tractor factory, a tank factory. It's, it's an industrial mill town on a river. Unfortunately for the Germans, what this does is it creates a moonscape of rubble that the Russians find better than a fortress. So the flattening of Stalingrad's buildings, most of them, uh, result in an actual increase to the ability of the defenders to defend the city. Stalingrad orders not one step back. 
the civilians of Stalingrad are ordered to stay. They're not allowed to leave. They're not allowed to retreat and let their city be a battlefield. They're expected to stay in the basements and sub-basements under their homes. They're expected to go to work if they can. They're expected to help the army. And Stalin is going to throw as many forces as he can into holding Stalingrad, including from Siberia. The Germans are at the extreme end of their supplies. And they're going to throw, well, at first they just throw von Paulus's weakened army in. So in August, von Paulus drives into Stalingrad, but doesn't quite reach the river. The Russians stop him. For the next, let's see, it starts in August, it ends in February. So what's that, seven months? August, September, October, November, December, January, February. Seven months. Uh, the battle is going to be between the Germans who want to drive to the river and take the whole city and the Russians who are holding out by the river and trying to push the Germans back. This is the scene for an actual pretty good movie called Enemy at the Gates at the beginning, which deals with a sniper battle that is based on some real sniper battles that occurred during the Battle of Stalingrad in World War II. Lights, please.